Hey, so this project we're doing has to do with geocaching. So I'm out here today looking for my first geocache. Stay tuned, let's see if I find it. All right, so we found it. We get to sign it and put it back for the next person to find. So we'll head back to the lab and I'll show you what we're building for a geocacher in the Netherlands. Well, that was pretty cool, doing some uh, geocaching outside. That was a lot of fun, actually. So what is this project? This project is a Wi-Fi geocache component. Uh, someone on Reddit had asked in one of the electronics forums for some help. I said, sure, I'll help. Through some email exchanges, we came up with a set of requirements. So what this geocacher wants is to be able to add Wi-Fi to his geocache to kind of extend the fun of it, the puzzle of it, if you will, to provide the person finding the geocache with an additional puzzle, uh, information. So let's just quickly look at the requirements I collected via email with this individual. Uh, it needs to be easy to build. Uh, it needs to use a nine volt battery that will be supplied by the person that finds it. So they carry the nine volt with them, they plug it in, and then they continue with whatever the puzzle is. Um, it needs to display the latitude and longitude of the next geocache. And it needs to display that latitude and longitude as part of the SSID or the access point Wi-Fi name. I decided to expand this since it's really a software only project. Very little hardware as you'll see. I've expanded this to include the concept of a captive portal so that if you want to use this in a geocache, you can also have an HTML page come up. So you can provide them with all sorts of additional information, not just what's limited to the Wi-Fi access point name. So anyway, that's what we're doing. And as you can tell, this can be done with a lot of um, microprocessors or microcontrollers. Uh, we're gonna use an ESP8266. You could use an uh, Android with a, a, a Wi-Fi hat or something like that, but the ESP8266 is cheap. It works great. We're going to design uh, a very small circuit with a voltage regulator to handle the 9-volt battery plug-in, and then the project is really software. So with that, let's get to it. This is a very simple circuit. Really, this whole project takes place in software. We have the D1 Mini here. We're, by the way, we're in KiCad or KiCad. Uh, this is the D1 Mini ESP8266. And since one of the requirements was to use a 9 volt supplied by the geocacher, we're going to use the LM7805. It is a classic. There's no reason to use anything else. They're cheaper. If you can't find one, you're not looking. However, you can use any voltage regulator that steps down 9 volts to 5 volts. We've got two caps on the uh, voltage regulator just to clean up any signal, any voltage um, spikes. We've got our 9 volt battery. We've got it connected to the 5 volt line from the output of the LM7805 and we've got ground connected. We're not actually using any of these other pins for anything. In software, we are going to implement the SSID Wi-Fi um, access point. So it's kind of a great project if you want to play around with KiCad, you want to build something out. Uh, if we go to the actual wiring diagram, we can see that there's very little wiring in place. And if we look at the 3D view, you will actually see how it would look if we had the PCB manufactured. And I did, I actually sent these in. Why, why not? I thought it would be kind of fun, nice and clean interface. So I had a couple of these PCBs manufactured. When they come in, I will show them to you. And then we'll put the components on. So that's really all there is to 
this circuit. It's all in software. 99% of it is going to be software based. Okay, I want to show you what the project looks like with the captive portal. So this is obviously the prototype board for the ESP8266 D1 Mini. Got a voltage regulator. What we're going to do is plug it into the 9 volt battery and it turns on. Now I'm going to pull up my phone and show you what the user sees. Okay, so what they see now is uh, connect to the geocache. That's the SSID I provided. Notice there's no password. There's no lock next to it. That's because we set the password to blank. Now if the user chooses it, they should be able to connect and there they go. They're actually taken to a, an HTML page which you can change in the source code. So that's how the captive portal portion of it works. Let's look at what it looks like without a captive portal uh, just with the SSID name. Okay, so I've gone back into the source code and I've commented out the definition of captive underscore portal. So now we're not using it. This is the scenario that the original requester wanted. Basically, you plug in the 9 volt, the device comes online, and now let's pull up my phone and let's see what we get. Turn on the Wi-Fi, and what we see is a line with the latitude and longitude and has a little lock next to it. That's because I supplied a password. In this case, we don't really want the geocacher to connect to the Wi-Fi. We just want to present them with a message. In this case, the message is the latitude and longitude of the next geocache. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at the source code so you can put your own messages in. So looking at the code, you'll notice that there are two pound defines at the beginning. One for debug, which will output some additional information to the serial monitor, and one for captive portal. If you want to use the captive portal, you remove the comment. Otherwise, you leave it like it is. I made it sound like it's one or the other, and the truth is, I mean, that it is. However, you can use uh, a custom SSID, like a lat long as part of your puzzle, and still use the captive portal to provide the, the user with additional information. So really what we're controlling here is whether you're gonna have the captive portal or not, but the Wi-Fi SSID is completely configurable by you in both cases. So if we, if we move down past these includes, which are used to include uh, the pieces that are necessary uh, to do both of these tasks, um, you'll see under the captive portal, the SSID can be configured. You can put whatever you want in here. I chose to connect to the geocache, and I also chose not to per put a password. I'm sure you could come up with a puzzle that requires the password from the last geocache to be used to enter to get into this one if you wanted. There's all sorts of interesting ideas. And then the message, I displayed the words, hello world. You could display something much more complicated if you wanted. If you choose not to use the captive portal, then the default behavior is I have put in the um, lat long of a location. See if you can look that up, by the way. That's a little Easter egg. And then uh, I've put a password because in this case, we don't really have the captive portal. So there's nothing for them really to connect to. If you're going to do the captive portal, I set up a, DN a web server and a DNS server. Um, setup is called um, when the device first comes online, when it first powers up. And basically what we do is we initialize the Wi-Fi. And if you're going to do a captive portal, I, be, I start the DNS server because we want to we want to intercept all DNS requests to point back to ourselves. That's hence the captiveness. That's how we're capturing all the requests. In the initialized Wi-Fi, we determine whether we're we're gonna we need to destroy the previous web server we created on power on. It's already destroyed. Um, we do a couple things just prep house. You know, house cleaning, we disconnect the Wi-Fi. I've, I actually pulled this code from another project that I had built, which maybe I'll show you guys in the future. But that's what those are leftovers from. If you're always restarting, if you're always plugging in a battery and then disconnecting it, you don't obviously need to delete the previous web server or call Wi-Fi disconnect. 
but in this case it's good house cleaning uh, a debug we display some information we set up the Wi-Fi and then we set up the web server if we're going to do captive portal loop is called and this is really for those people who aren't into electronics or embedded you know the geocachers who want to use this loop is called um, after setup so setup is called one time and then loop is called over and over again every time it returns it's called again so what we're doing in here is just looking for any DNS requests that we need to process and handling any web server requests that's all this loop does over and over again and then if we're going to handle any web server requests we basically handle all of them the same way through this handle request method and all handle request does is send um, the index page for each request it's just hello world that's all that we do and that's all there is to this code I mean it is super simple uh, you're either creating a Wi-Fi connection uh, and letting them you know connect to it and then showing them a page or you're just showing them a Wi-Fi connection and you're not allowing them to connect and all of that is controlled through those pound defines all right well hopefully you can take this code and have some fun with it set up your own uh, geocaches set up some puzzles if you want have a really good time with it one thing I should point out uh, to people who've have never done embedded or never used an Arduino is how to actually get the code compile it and put it onto your your ESP8266 I don't want to go into great depths there's there's tons of YouTube videos to help you set up the Arduino IDE for the ESP8266 but to put it in a nutshell you need to download the free Arduino IDE whatever the latest version is and you need to go on YouTube and you're going to search for some information that explains how to add the ESP8266 to the Arduino IDE. And basically what it involves is adding a URL to your preferences and then you'll need to download the libraries. Actually, you might already get those libraries when you add the board. Um, the board that we're using is called a D1, R2, and Mini. That, that'll pretty much cover you for the ESP8266 boards. So that's all you really need to do. And then you'll download this source code from, from uh, Bitbucket. It's linked under the video. And you should be able to plug in your D1 Mini and upload the source code after you compile it. So instead of just designing the prototype board, which I showed when I demoed what the software does, I've decided to take the KiCad PCB and actually have it manufactured and show you how that's done. So what's cool is, is if you go to Osh Park, they can actually take a KiCad file, a PCB file, and the pricing is, is also very impressive in terms of having just a few of these manufactured. So if you go back to KiCad, you'll see that we have this PCB, KiCad underscore, underscore PCB, and we've laid out everything that we wanted to. And if you go and you click Browse Files and you choose that PCB, it'll actually upload it. Notice I'm not even logged in, so you can get an idea of pricing and stuff. Oshpark is not a sponsor um, for large PCBs, uh, large quantities. I actually go with another um manufacturer of PCBs but for quicker turnaround times um, and fairly low prices so it looks like so he, here's the board as we can see um, three boards will cost $11.25 and that includes shipping so for $11.25 you can get three of these boards manufactured and that's what I've done so let me show you what those boards look like they've come in and I'm gonna put them together now these are the boards that I ordered for the um, Wi-Fi geocache component. So let's see what we got here. It's always like Christmas. All right, cool sticker. Wash Park sticker. Mm -hmm. And the PCBs. They're really simple. 
PCBs. They look pretty good. Um, the little notches still on them. I'll clean those off. So we want to go ahead and build these out so I can send two of them to my uh, my friend in the Netherlands who asked about this project. So with that, let's get started and we'll actually uh, put two of these together right now. All right, so there we go. If we turn, plug this one in, we should get, also get the, um, the LED showing us that it's working. And now all we need to do is go and install the software and ship them off to the Netherlands. Cool. So here we go. These are the beasts. I made two of them for them. And... Uh, Hopefully he'll be able to have fun with his geocache component, add this in, and make a really cool puzzle with it. Alright guys, stay tuned for more fun. Someone on... Blah blah blah.